Today I'm going to recap a Chinese film called Wu Sha, Shadow. Thousands of years ago, Chinese monarchs and nobles had to deal with battles, internal power struggles, and the continuous danger of assassination, so they discreetly used replacements known as shadows. The shadows bravely sacrificed their lives in service to their masters, demonstrating their devotion by embracing death. The famed and influential commander, Ziyu of the Kingdom of Pei, lost combat against the seemingly invincible Kong, the general of the King of Yang. As a result, the Kingdom of Pei lost one of its essential towns, Jingzhou, to the Kingdom of Yang. Lu Yan, the minister of the Pei Kingdom, announces to the king that Ziyu, the commander, has challenged the general of the Yang Kingdom to a one-on-one -on -one duel to retake Jing City. Upon hearing this, the monarch becomes outraged and asks the minister to bring the commander before him. The king walks into a room where Ziyu's wife Xiao and the king's sister Qingping are playing Tai Chi. When Ziyu comes, the king immediately questions his visit to Yang. The king is concerned that the duel would spark a war and shatter the peace. When asked if he thinks he can win, Ziyu responds that he is doubtful and adds that he is willing to accept any penalty for disrespecting the monarch. But the king states that he will not behead Ziyu since he has taken care of him and his sister and secured his reign all these years. The king requests that Ziyu and his wife Xiao play the zither for him. Ziyu declines to perform, stating that the kingdom is in turmoil and that he is not in the mood, after Xiao and Ziyu leave the room. The king tells Lu Yan about his intention to marry his beloved sister Qingping to Yang Kang's son Yang Ping. The marriage's primary goal is to keep the peace between the two kingdoms and prevent conflict. Xiao discovers a hidden room that leads to a cave, revealing that the true commander Ziyu suffered significant injuries in his last battle with Yang Kong and is presently resting in a hidden cave in his mansion. In contrast, the commander dealing with everyone is a man named Jing, also known as the Shadow of Ziyu because of his strong resemblance to Ziyu. Jing was stolen and covertly trained as a shadow by Ziyu's uncle 20 years ago. He spent all of these years in the cave where he was trained until Ziyu's health deteriorated a year ago. Ziyu severely trained Jing, and now he wants Jing to murder Yang and take over Jing City. Furthermore, once Jing beats Yang and retakes Jin City, he will be permitted to return to his mother, to make things appear comparable. Ziyu uses a knife to cut deep into Jing's chest since he has a wound in the exact location. Ziyu then adds medicinal herbs to the wound to hasten the healing process and make it appear exactly like his. The next day, as they prepare for the court session where the king will sentence Ziyu, Xiao offers Jing some ointment to put on his wound. Jing becomes upset and begins to describe how difficult it was for him to remain in the dark without any people or good presence. As the lovely lady that she is, Xiao begins to console him. Still, the latter becomes overly thrilled and tightly hugs her, which surprises Xiao, and she pushes him away before leaving. The king chooses to punish Ziyu, unaware that he is a shadow. The monarch demotes him to the rank of a commoner for violating his instructions and instigating a war with Yang. However, before Ziyu's shadow leaves, the king demands to inspect the wound inflicted by Yang's saber so that he may cure it himself. When he inspects the wound, he discovers that it is new. But Ziyu's shadow responds that the previous wound had healed, but he purposefully caused himself a fresh cut to remind himself of his guilt over Jing City's failure. In the cave, Xiao tells Ziyu that Jing handled the king well, but Ziyu believes that the monarch is wary of Jing because he is his shadow. Jing uses an umbrella as a weapon but is no match for Ziyu, who copies Yang Kang's style. This enrages Ziyu, and he doubts Jing's readiness for the battle. The minister enters a feast in the hall and tells that Yang Ping has agreed to the ceasefire but would only take Qingping as a concubine. He has also sent his dagger to Qingping as a proposal. The court regards this as an insult. However, despite Qingping's denial, the king accepts it to settle the fight. Qingping, on the other hand, takes the dagger as a symbol of her agreement to be Ping's concubine. Yang instructs his son Ping on how to handle a saber in warfare, telling him that Yangs are known for their might, quickness, and death in three rounds of combat. Ping claims that he requested Qingping to be his concubine to deter the Pei's from attempting to take Jing City through battle, however, he is taken aback when he finds that she has accepted. Ping believes they may overcome the Pei's since Pei's two strong generals, Ziyu and Tian, have turned commoners, after several failed attempts, Xiao suggests that Jing use feminine techniques and embrace the umbrella's yin symbol to defeat Yang Kong. She also explains the yin and yang philosophy, which states that yang is associated with light, fire, and masculinity, whereas yin is associated with darkness, water, and femininity. At Ziyu's request, 
Jing visits Tian as Ziyu and orders him to learn specific winning skills for the conflict with the Yangs, he also instructs Tian to command and teach the hundreds of prisoners who live outside the forest. Jing eventually brings Tian to visit Ziyu, who informs him of Jing's existence and mission. Tian hears from Ziyu that he plans to distract Yang Kong for three rounds while the army strikes and retakes the city. After retaking the city, Ziyu intends to become king, with Tian as his commander. Tian, a loyal general, obeys his superior, but Ziyu requests that he undergo fresh umbrella training from Xiao. Ziyu Jing and Xiao had a drink together the night before the combat, after Jing and Xiao returned to their home, he admits that he could have gone when he had so many opportunities, but he stayed for Xiao and would do everything for her, while they continue to converse, Jing states that he feels no one will care if he dies in the war, but when Xiao confesses that she cares and that his life is essential to her, he is taken aback, thanks her, and goes to sleep, after some time, Xiao follows him to his bed and spends the night with him while Ziyu keeps an eye on them through a hidden peephole. Jing sails by the sea the next day on a floating platform to Jing City for the combat. Yang Kong is ignorant that Jing is a shadow and misidentifies him as Ziyu. He is convinced that Ziyu will fight one on one as promised. Surprisingly, Qingping is also among the criminals seeking retribution against Ping for disgracing her. Tian attempts to stop her, but she refuses to listen. While Yang Kong and other authorities are engrossed in the duel, Tian Qing and the prisoners swim under the storm gates and enter the city. Jing defeats Yang Kong in the first round of the three-round fight, but he wins the next two rounds. Jing's determination is impressive. Yang recommends a draw, but Jing rejects it and wishes to continue fighting. Meanwhile, Tian and the prisoners use metal umbrella weapons to push Yang Ping and his soldiers back. Although both sides suffer substantial fatalities while protecting the banner, Yang Ping fights with Qingping, gravely wounding her. Yang Ping inquires why a woman would fight, and as he enters to hear her, she stabs him to death with the same dagger he had sent her. Tian overthrows the Yang flag with this, and Yang Kong becomes enraged and begins severely assaulting Jing. On the other hand, Jing uses a fractured piece of an umbrella blade to murder Yang. At Pei, Xiao pays Ziyu a visit to the cave, and he wonders if it was proper to send the shadow to the battle. To which Xiao says that there is no right or wrong and that whatever needs to be done is done. Jing returns home after assassinating Yang and learns that his mother has been stabbed. He is quickly ambushed by a group of assassins who ambush him inside the house. Fortunately, he is saved when an assassin is killed by an emissary professing to be the king's agent. The emissary then explains that the king has summoned Jing to the palace, which surprises Jing since he wonders how the king knew about his presence. Meanwhile, Assassins come into Ziyu's cave to kill him. Ziyu fights back despite his illness and weakness. Jing appears at Pei's victory feasts, and the monarch orders everyone to leave except Xiao and Minister Lu Yan. When the king discovers that Lu Yan is the spy working for the Yangs, he executes him. The monarch, pleased with Jing's triumph, seeks to reward him by forming a legitimate marriage between him and Xiao. According to the monarch, he only wants one faithful Ziyu. Thus, Jing will no longer have to play the role of the shadow. Meanwhile, a masked assassin enters the room carrying a box containing Ziyu's head. However, as the king opens it, he finds it empty, and the assassin stabs him from behind, causing him to drop to the ground. The assassin then removes his disguise, identifying himself as Ziyu, harmed and enraged. Ziyu orders Jing to assassinate the king, claiming that he is the one who ordered Jing's mother's execution. Furthermore, he requests that Jing transport Xiao far away with him. Ziyu tries to attack Jing from behind as he lunges for the king's sword, but Jing injures Ziyu mortally. He then replaces the assassin's mask on Ziyu's face, leaving the latter defenseless. He then murders the king with Ziyu's sword and lays it on Ziyu's hand, accusing him of murder. Jing exits the hull and informs the authorities gathered outside that the king has been assassinated and that it was the assassin. Tian appears doubtful of the narrative but he does not object, in horror, Xiao rushes to the corridor doors and peers through an aperture, that's all. I hope you enjoyed it, please subscribe and like for more, take care until the next time.